Before we start off today's episode, there is one thing I mentioned as we were passing by this area on the seafloor with all the ladders. Remember how I said there was absolutely nothing interesting in this area? Well, I was correct in saying that, but there is an item down here that I promised that I would retrieve for you, and it is not the magic pudding. It is, in fact, in this present all the way over here. Trivia card three. Again, I'm going to hold off on explaining what the trivia cards are until we get all four of them, and the last one is in the last chapter. So, let's just see what happens when we run out of air, because it's the quickest way for us to get back to shore and open up today's episode. So, hello guys, this is Universal Giant, and welcome back for more of Let's Play Mother 3. We've arrived back in Tasmalee Village after almost pulling the needle on Tantane Island. It seems like the Masked Man has already pulled three, which means we have to pull the next two or something bad might happen. But for now, let's see what Alec has to say. Oh, Lucas. Slowly but steadily, the people of Tasmalee have been heading into the big city. I didn't know you guys were still here, though. What's that? You're looking for Ionia's house? It's certainly not nearby, I can tell you that. Do you remember my little cabin in the mountains where you'd come to visit? To the west of that old cabin is Argilla Pass. You can get to Ionia's place from there. Whatever the case, it'd probably be a good idea to take the map. I ran into Mapson just a minute ago. He might still be around here somewhere. You should get him to mark your map for you. But first... You heard a reggae rhythm. Ah. Uh, that's right, we're going to be heading to Ionia's place to see if she knows where the penultimate needle is. And in order to do that, we have to talk to Mapson here. Good old Mapson. If you need something from the map owning and map loving Mapson, it must be a map, yes. I don't know anything about this Ionia person, but I do know where Argilla Pass is. Let me see your map for a second. There! This map shows where Argilla Pass is. And now we know where Argilla Pass is. Bye now. This has been the map-loving and map-owning Mapson. And I don't believe we'll ever run into him again. Kind of sad. But you'll see, if you try to go into most of these places, no one seems to be home. I'm stuck in this village because no one invited me to go with them. When did everyone suddenly get together and discuss leaving for the big city? Big city? Are the rumors true? Is everybody leaving for the city? What does the mayor have to say? I'm the mayor here, which means I'll be one of the last people to leave for the big city. Even so, I really want to go. I should just ditch this miserable village and be done with it. Oh, Lucas! You didn't hear me talking to myself just now, did you? Yeah, that's right. Everybody's heading for the big city. We never actually had a big city around here, have we? This has always been a homely, not technologically advanced place. Kind of a utopia-like, but... Big city? That's gotta be something no one's ever seen before. Something's not right with the way everyone is suddenly moving to the big city. I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, West Shore has a good handle on what's going on, but it doesn't seem like he can do much about it. So, with everybody leaving Tasmalee for the big city, we're only left with one place to go, and that's to find where Ionia's place is. Supposedly, it's an Argilla Pass, where... The map will show us good old maps, and so we have to go all the way through the forest again. Lighter and fuel, I forgot I should talk to you guys. What's up, guys? I'm not sure what to do, it's a real dilemma. Should we head into the big city, or should we stay behind and keep an eye on the village? I just can't decide. Don't worry, Dad, whatever happens, happens. That's a good attitude to have, lighter fuel. Oh boy, all these characters from the very beginning of the game that... We just haven't seen much of because we've been too busy fighting off the pig masks and the masked man and all of these evil people like Facade that are doing bad things. But we've forgotten all the little people that were involved in this that are just, well, I'd like to say innocent victims in all of this, but quite frankly, I don't understand what's going on myself. A lot of this is just weird. What are you doing attacking me? Duster attacked with blinding speed and we were able to exit the battle before we before any turns had passed whatsoever, but yeah, all the really weak enemies are still here, and we got to run through them without getting any experience in Earthbound. You did. In this game, you don't. I know that's a little point of confusion for some of you, and I don't want to waste too much time getting those presents, because they're nothing of any worth, and our inventories are just about full. 
So we only have one place to go, and that's up Mount Oreander again. And we're pretty much there already, which is a bit surprising. Remember how long these trips took us before, but... Oh! I recognize this area. Ionia's house is north of here. The western path should lead us there. Let's go! Remember the place that the ants wouldn't allow us to go to before? Or Gila Pass, also known as Stumble Pass. Be careful not to drop anything. Stumble Pass? Why is it called Stumble Pass? I kind of figured. Whoa, we really did stumble! Huh? Where'd the jar of yummy pickles go? Did we drop it? Though I guess that's what happens when it's easy to drop and easy to roll around. It shouldn't be hard to find. Let's split up and look for it. Boney, you help too. And now, my favorite part of the game! We get to run around as Solo Boney! Everybody's favorite character and a very funky theme to listen to, but what we have to do is sniff up these little sparkles in the ground. Most of them will be insignificant objects, one of them is going to be something cool, I forget which it is. I thought we'd find it pretty quick, but... So if we find one of these... Dig it up. Found something small, or our inventory was already full. Well, that stinks. We're gonna have to drop something. Talk about breaking the... Breaking the what? Breaking... Breaking! Breaking the laws of physics? Absolutely not, but let's go with that. Did I say not to drop it? Stop failing. Where is it? I did drop it. Okay, I'm not looking for something small. I'm looking for something kind of heavy. Think you can find a bony? If you can find anything, take it to Lucas. Apparently you guys can't see the sparkles in the dirt. Oh well, we can. Found something soft. What could that be? Lucas! I found something! The recollection bell! That's not very helpful. Let's drop it so we can dig up something else. I am totally not planned. And I've forgotten how to speak English. No comprende, senor. Something that looks delicious. What is it? Rotten eclair. Bony! Why do you think it looks delicious? It's not delicious. I won't even let you eat it. It's still not delicious. Okay, the first sparkle we would have come across. Something hard. There we go. A major look. No! I'm finding everything except the one thing that I want. Can't even sell these things. I'm pretty sure this was the first thing we dug up, too. Something small. But we couldn't hold it before. Now we can. A pumice charm! Alright, that's what I was looking for, I think. Was it? Well, there's only one thing left for us to dig up, and I think we've wasted enough time, so let's dig this up. Something that seems sour gotta be the thing we were looking for, the jar of yummy pickles. Well, that was boring. You find it? It's a little dirty, but that's the uh, jar of yummy pickles, all right. And now we don't get to run around as Tony anymore. We can, however, take the pumice charm off his hands and give it to anybody. Let's see. Both of your inventories are full. I'd like to see who would get the most out of it, but... Uh, I guess we'll just give it to whoever has the least. They all have the Feather Charm equipped, so let's... Yeah, let's just give it to Duster because he has room for it. And equip it to Duster. I regret not moving stuff around off-screen, but oh well, I'm lazy. As we head further up our Gila Pass here, we'll find a sign for a hot spring all the way over here, but it's not as close as you might think. In fact, this entire area is a pretty long area, and I forgot the thing was right here. Hello. So we'll heal up a little bit, since we took very minor damage from an attack on the seafloor I completely forgot about, and there's a mole up there, so we can sell our stuff, and rearrange our stuff, and get more money. So, I will do that off-screen, and then we will start buying things from this guy. Selling... Good, now let's buy some stuff. What do you got, buddy? Sincerity Dumplings, Clever Stick. Yeah, sure, why not? Strong gloves, not stronger than that. Non-slip shoes, not good for you. Otter hat, sure. No! 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 Okay, reloaded the save file and did not sell the awesome crown. I can be really stupid sometimes, I swear, guys. Don't be like me. Don't be stupid. Check the thing you're selling before you sell it. 
Okay, not selling your mystical item. What else? Pumice charm? Sure. Duster, 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 duster. Not selling your mystical weapon either. Pro bandana? Sure. You already have the pumice charm. Lucky you. And Boney, you can get an honor hat. I think that's it for everybody. Okay, reaffirming the fact that I am an idiot, let's actually go through this dungeon-like cave cavern area place that's pretty challenging. But before we can, we have some other enemies to deal with. The first one's very similar to one we ran into early on in the game. The Tender Loving Tree. Remember the trees! Brain shock. Thank you very much, tree. Yeah, they violently burst into flames when they die, except they will hit everyone except one person in the party. At least we have a lot of HP, so we can absorb those pretty well, and... A fresh egg! I'm... Um, all oh, right, we just sold off our stuff. I thought we'd run out of room in our inventory. And another upgraded enemy from earlier, the Blue Balding Eagle. He's pretty fast. But again, not too much to deal with at this point. And another level up. I am loving these level ups. So let's not be carefree and just heal up everybody that's taking significant damage, unlike I've been doing lately. And make our way further up and run into even more enemies. Apparently these bolding eagles know roost. And they can just settle on the branch of a tree and heal up some HP. That's interesting to know. But now we've entered the cave that I've been alluding to for the last two minutes. This cave! We're actually going towards the bottom right, but there is plenty of other stuff for us to get on the opposite side of the cave, which I'm going to be exploring quite a bit. But first, some new enemies will be grinding off of a lot. The Mecha Moles! They're pretty weak enemies overall. But of course they have the Fate Serious music that I like comboing to. Which is why I like grinding off of these guys a lot. And in here we'll encounter some other enemies. One of my least favorite enemies in the entire game, right here. The Cuddle Bombs. These guys like to latch onto your party members, and when they do, they will explode and it will hurt a lot. The easiest way to take care of them is with a freeze spell. So you clung to Kumatora. Clung to- Both of you cling to Kumatora, leave her alone! Again with the Accelerando music, which slowly gets faster every couple of seconds. And then it resets like this, so you have to pay attention to when it's going to do that. You can see our physical attacks aren't doing very much because they're pretty defensive. Now they've murmured two, so we're getting pretty close to defeating these guys, but at the same time they're getting close to exploding.
And now there's only one turn before they explode. So I guess we'll deal with them as fast as we can. And they're going to explode on Kumatora. I bet she's not very happy about that. Well, I guess we'll just have to heal her up. No big deal, but the battle did take quite a while. Sorry, Kumatora. Did not mean for that to hurt you so much, but it did. Oh well. And magic pudding that I didn't need. Level ups for Lucas and Boney there, but something else Duster can do when an enemy attacks you from behind is he can flip it around, and both of them wound up being facing the opposite direction when we entered that battle. Anyway, here's a pretty rare enemy. The Mystery Metal Monkey. This thing has maximum defense, so your physical attacks won't do much. However, you can combo it to kill it, and in return, it was a good experience. And a major look, which I don't need, and I'm not even going to bother selling, I'm just going to throw it away. Yeah, I gotta start keeping tabs on all the items in my inventory because I tend to hoard items a little more than I should. I should stop wasting time comboing to those guys. And in here we'll find everybody's favorite enemy! Negative Man! I don't know why I snuck up on him because he's more interesting when he's facing forward. So let's just wait for him to turn around and give him a couple of turns to do his thing. Negative man moaned. Just get rid of me now. He's attacking. One HP worth of damage. You're not very strong, Mr. Negative man. What are you attacking for? I'm not attacking you. I'm not a threat. Life is but a moment. A meaningless grain of sand. Oh, I didn't want to run away. I like that dude. Get back into the fight. Sobbed, moaned, and started wailing. I guess we'll start wailing away at you then. Murmured, life is but a moment, a meaningless grain of sand. And in case you couldn't tell, this is Strong One playing in the background. And I apparently still remember how to combo to it. Just get rid of me now. Get used to comboing to this song. We'll be hearing it a lot at the end of this chapter. Mumbling, I'm nothing but a worthless protoplasm. Well, we'll see how much worthless he is when we see how much experience we get. Speaking of which... Three experience points. Anyway, I think it's as good a time as any to end off the episode, because everybody loves ending things off on a negative note. This is Universal Giant, and we'll hopefully reach the other end of the cavern in the next episode. See you then!